uh, John chapter 20, John chapter 20. First day of the week cometh Mary Magdalene early. This is after the crucifixion of the Lord Jesus Christ on the third day. When it was yet dark unto the sepulchre, and seeth the stone taken away from the sepulchre, then she runneth and cometh to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved, this is John, and saith unto them, They have taken away the Lord out of the sepulchre, and we know not where they have laid him. Peter therefore went forth and that other disciple and came to the sepulchre. So they ran both together, and the other disciple did outrun Peter, and came first to the sepulchre, and he stooping down and looking in, saw the linen clothes lying, yet went he not in. Then came Simon Peter following him, and went into the sepulchre, and seeth the linen clothes lying, and the napkin that was about his head, not lying with the linen clothes, but wrapped together, in a place by itself. Then went in also that other disciple, which came first to the sepulchre, and he saw and believed. For as yet they knew not the scripture that he must rise again from the dead. Then the disciples went away again unto their own home, but Mary stood without at the sepulchre weeping. And as she wept, she stooped down and looked into the sepulchre, and seeth two angels in white sitting, the one at the head and the other at the feet where the body of Jesus had lain. And they say unto her, uh, Woman, why weepest thou? She said unto them, Because they have taken away my Lord, and I know not where they have laid him. When she had thus said, she turned herself back and saw Jesus standing and knew not that it was Jesus. Jesus said unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? Whom seekest thou? She, supposing him to be the gardener, said unto him, Sir, if thou have brought him hence, in other words, if thou hast taken him away, carried him away, tell me where thou hast laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said unto her, Mary. She turned herself and said unto him, Rabboni, which is to say, Master. Jesus said unto her, Touch me not, for I am not yet ascended to my Father, but go to my brethren and say unto them, I send unto my Father and your Father, and to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord, and that he had spoken these things unto her. Then the same day at uh, evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, came Jesus and stood in the midst, and said unto them, Peace be unto you. And when he had so said, he showed unto them his hands and his side. Then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. Then said Jesus to them again, Peace be unto you. As my Father has sent me, even so send I you. And when he had uh, said this, he breathed on them and said unto them, Receive ye the Holy Spirit. Uh, whosoever sins ye remit, uh, they are remitted unto them, and whosoever sins ye retain, they are retained. But Thomas, one of the twelve, called Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciple therefore said unto him, We have seen the Lord. But he said unto them, Except I shall see in his hands the print of the nails, and put my finger into the print of the nails, and thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe. And after eight days, again, his disciples were within, and Thomas with them. Then cometh Jesus, the doors being shut, and stood in the midst, and said, Peace be unto you. Then saith he to Thomas, Reach hither, or reach here thy finger, and behold my hands, and reach hither my hand, and thrust it into my side, and be not faithless, but believing. 
And Thomas answered and said unto him, My Lord, and thy God. Jesus said unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed, blessed or happy are they that have not seen and yet have believed. Many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written that ye might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing ye might have life through his name. See, that's what it's all about, is having life through the name of the Lord Jesus Christ by believing upon him, by receiving him as our Saviour. What we need to do is come in repentance toward God, that is, a change of mind. Simply agree with God that you are a sinner, and then believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Then uh, Jesus then cometh and taketh bread and giveth them, and 
this likewise. Now, uh, this is now the third time that Jesus showed himself to his disciples after that he was risen from the dead. So when they had died, Jesus said unto Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? He saith unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, Feed my lambs. He said to him again the second time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? He saith unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, Feed my sheep. He saith unto him the third time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? Peter was grieved because he said unto him the third time, Lovest thou me? And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things, thou knowest that I love thee. Jesus said unto him, Feed my sheep. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, When thou wast young, thou girdest thyself, and walkest whither thou wouldest, or wherever you wanted to go. But when thou shalt be old, thou shalt stretch forth thy hands, and another shall gird thee, and carry thee uh, whither thou wouldest not. This spake he, signifying by what death he should glorify God. And when he had spoken this, he said unto him, Follow me. Then Peter, turning about, seeth the disciple whom Jesus loved following, which also leaned on his breast at supper, and said, Lord, which is he that betrayeth thee? And Peter said, uh, seeing him, said to Jesus, Lord, and what shall this man do? Jesus said unto him, If I will that he tarry till I come, what is that to thee? Follow thou me. In other words, mind your own business. You just be concerned about following me. Then went this saying abroad among the brethren that that disciple should not die. Yet Jesus said not unto him, Ye shall not die, but if I will, that he tarry till I come. What is that to thee? This is the disciple which testifieth of these things and wrote these things, and we know that his testimony is true. And there are also many other things which Jesus did, the which, if they should be written every one, I suppose that even the world itself could not contain the books that should be written. Yes, the Lord Jesus Christ is a wonderful person, my friend. In fact, he's the most important person in the whole of this universe. The Son of God came down from heaven. God was clothed with a body. God put upon himself, took upon himself a body, that he by the grace of God should taste death for every man upon the cross of Calvary. He was crucified for you and for me. Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and he was buried. But praise God, the third day he rose again according to the scriptures. I wonder, where does that find you this morning? Are you still on the broad road that leads down to hell and destruction? There's no need for that, my friend. You can get right with God this morning. You can have forgiveness for your sins, and that's exactly why I'm here this morning. Why? Because I'm concerned about your soul that leaves your body at the moment of death. If you just don't die like a dog and we're finished, we're done. We have an eternal soul that leaves our body at the moment of death. But where will I be five seconds after I die? Is it going to be in heaven? Now the only way it can be in heaven is through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. If you would put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, my friend, this morning your soul be saved. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Repentance toward God, that is a change of mind, simply agree with God that you are a sinner, and then believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. That could be yours this morning. This would be the best day of your entire life if you would come to know Jesus Christ as your Saviour. You know, he's either going to be your Saviour or he's going to be your Judge. I wonder what will it be for you? Saviour or Judge? It's up to you. Salvation or damnation? This is an urgent message this morning, my friend. 
You need to get right with God. You need a forgiveness for your sins. And this forgiveness is only possible through the precious shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, which he shed for us freely upon the cross of Calvary. As I said before, Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures. And he was buried. And he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. Is your soul saved this morning, my friend? Are you on your way to heaven? Or are you still on the broad road that leads down to hell and destruction? There's no need for that, my friend. God wants you to be in heaven. But we cannot be in heaven, I can absolutely assure you from the word of the living God, that you cannot be in heaven apart from the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why the Bible says, He that hath the Son hath life. He that hath not the Son of God hath not life. Do you have the Son of God? Have you believed on Him for your eternal salvation? In whom we have redemption, through His blood even, the forgiveness of sin. If you're interested in this, look me up, youtube.com forward slash peace by Jesus Christ. God bless you and thanks for listening. Chapter 1, the book of Acts, chapter 1. For the treaties have I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach, until the day in which he was taken up after that he, through the Holy Spirit, had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen. To whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them forty days, and speaking of uh, the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which said he, ye have heard of, him, of me. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days hence. Uh, when they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons, which the Father hath put in his own power. But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Spirit is come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem, and in Judea, and in Samaria, Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. And here we are, in the land of Oz, the land down under, and we're still preaching the gospel of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. The only way that you can be in heaven, my friend, is through the, through the sacrifice of the Lord Jesus Christ, and your right response to that. You see, you can either receive Christ, or you can reject him. I wonder what would you do then with Jesus, which is called the Christ? Will he be your saviour? Or will he have to be your judge? It's either one or the other, my friend. You must make a wise choice this afternoon. Get right with God. Have forgiveness for your sins through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. That means he came to save you and he came to save me. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. For there is not a just man upon the earth that doeth good and sinneth not. We're all in the same boat. We're all tarred with the same brushes, I say. We're all hell-deserving sinners, my friend, when we're born into this world. God wants to make you a saint. God wants to give you the new birth, being born by the Word of God and by the Holy Spirit of God. You see, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. You've got to hear the Word of God preach. You've got to come across the Word of God somehow. You've got to read the Word of God or hear it preach somehow to be saved. We need to understand we have a soul that needs to be saved and where, what you do with the Lord Jesus Christ will determine where you'll be for our all of eternity. Don't die without Jesus Christ, my friend. Because if you die without Christ, you'll be in hell. And that's exactly what God does not want for you, my friend.
my friend. God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Repentance being a change of mind. Simply agree with God that you are a sinner, and then believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. In whom we have redemption, through his blood even, the forgiveness of sins. When he had uh, spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. That is, the Lord Jesus Christ was received out of the sight of the disciples. He was going back to heaven after finishing the work of salvation, of redemption, upon the cross of Calvary, when he shed his precious blood for you and for me. In whom we have redemption, through his blood even, the forgiveness of sins. While they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. Then returned they unto Jerusalem from the mount of called Olivet, which is from Jerusalem a Sabbath day's journey. And when they were come in, they went up into an upper room, where abode both Peter and James and John, and Andrew, Philip, and Thomas, Bartholomew, and Matthew, James, the son of Alphaeus, and Simon Zelotes, and Judas, the brother of James. These all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication with the women, and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brethren. And in those days Peter stood up in the midst of the disciples and said the number of names together were about an hundred and twenty. Men and brethren, this scripture must needs have been fulfilled, which the Holy Spirit by the mouth of David uh, speak before concerning Judas, which was guide to them that took Jesus, that is, the betrayer. For he was numbered with us and had obtained part of this ministry. Now this man purchased a bill with the reward of iniquity, and falling headlong, he burst asunder in the midst, and all his bowels gushed out. And it was now known unto all the dwellers at Jerusalem, insomuch as that field is called in their proper tongue a silver, that is to say, the field of blood. For it is written in the book of uh, Psalms, Let his habitation be desolate, and let no man dwell therein. And his bishopric let another take. Wherefore, of these men which have accompanied with us all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John unto that same day that he was taken up from us, must one be ordained to be a witness for us, or sorry, a witness with us of his resurrection. When they appointed uh, Joseph called Barnabas, uh, Barsabas, who was surnamed Justice, and Matthias. And they prayed and said, Thou, Lord, which knoweth the hearts of all men, show whether or which of these two thou hast chosen, that he may take part in this ministry and apostleship, from which Judas by transgression fell, that he might go to his own place. And they gave forth their lots, and the lot fell upon Matthias, and he was numbered with the eleven apostles. Moving on to uh, Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. 
And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues or in different languages, having never learned them, as the Spirit gave them utterance. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews and devout men out of every nation under heaven. Now when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded. Because that every man heard him speak in his own language. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? And how hear we every man in our own tongue, wherein we were born? The Parthians and Medes and Elamites, and the dwellers in Mesopotamia, and in Judea, and Cappadocia, and Pontus, and Asia, Pergia, and Pamphylia, in Egypt, and in the parts of Libya, uh, about Cyrene, and strangers of Rome, Jews, and proselytes, Greeks and Arabians, we do hear them speak in our tongues, in our languages, the wonderful works of God. And they were all amazed and were in doubt, saying one to another, What meaneth this? Others mocking said, These men are full of new wine. In other words, these men are drunk. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea, and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and hearken to my words. These are uh, for these are not drunken, as ye suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last days, God said, the second God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servants and on my handmaidens I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in heaven above and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapour of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before that great and notable day of the Lord come. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Be prepared to call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved this afternoon. You see, you and I are out heading out into eternity. We're on a journey out into eternity. And our spirit and soul leave our body at the moment of death. I wonder where are you headed? Are you headed for heaven, my friend? Through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, because that's the only way you're going to get there. There's no salvation apart from Jesus Christ. He that hath the Son hath life. He that hath not the Son of God hath not life. Do you have the Son of God? Have you believed on Him for your eternal salvation? Now, what do you need to do? You need to come in repentance toward God. That is a change of mind. Simply agree with God that you are a sinner and then believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Ye men of Israel, hear these words, Jesus of Nazareth, the man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs which God did by him in the midst of you, as ye yourselves also know, him being delivered by the determinate counsel and foreknowledge of God, ye have taken and by wicked hands have crucified and slain. Whom God hath raised up, having loosed the pains of death, because it was not possible that he should be holden of it. Yes, the Lord Jesus Christ rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. Praise the Lord for that. He's a living, loving Saviour, my friend. He desires to save your soul from a long-lost eternity. No need to go down to hell, my friend. You can be in heaven through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. 
the Son of the living God, the one who can be your Savior this afternoon. What will you do then with Jesus, which is called the Christ? Uh, whom God hath raised up, having loosed the pains of death, because it was not possible that he should be holden of it. But David speaketh concerning... Him I first saw the Lord always before my face, for he is on my right hand that I should not be moved. Therefore did my heart rejoice, and my tongue was glad. Moreover, also my flesh shall rest in hope, because thou wilt not leave my soul in hell, neither wilt thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption. Thou hast made known to me the grace of life. Thou shalt make me full of joy with thy countenance. Men and brethren, let me freely speak unto you of the patriarch David, that he is both dead and buried, and that his, that his sepulchre is with us unto this day. Therefore, being a prophet, and knowing that God had sworn with an oath to, of, to him, that of the fruit of his loins, according to the flesh, he would raise up Christ to sit on his throne. He seeing this before spake of the resurrection of Christ, that his soul was not left in hell, neither his flesh did see corruption. This Jesus hath God raised up, whereof we all are witnesses. Therefore, being by the right hand of God exalted, and having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he has shed forth this which ye now see and hear. For David is not ascended into the heavens, but he said himself, The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou on my right hand until I make thy foes thy footstool. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made that same Jesus, whom ye have crucified both the Lord and Christ. Now when they heard this, they were quick in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Now, we must not get confused here. It's not saying that we need to get baptized to be saved, my friend. We need to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. We need to put our faith in Jesus Christ to be saved. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. But baptism is the next step of obedience for a believer, my friend, the first step of obedience. For someone who has believed on the Lord Jesus Christ and has received forgiveness for their sins. You see, you and I have sinned. You and I have sinned in the sight of the Lord. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That's the problem. For the wages of sin is death. That's the bad news. But the good news is this. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So if you want to be saved, my friend, you'll have to come by Jesus Christ. I'm preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. You must put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. You must come in repentance toward God that he is a change of mind. Simply agree with God that you are a sinner. Be honest before the God of heaven and then believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. See the heaven or hell, my friend. What will it be for you? Heaven or hell? Choose you this day whom you will serve. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Yes, it says here. For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are afar off, even as the many as the Lord our God shall call. And with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, 
Save your souls from this untoward generation. Then they that gladly received his word were baptized. In other words, those that were saved were baptized. And the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. What a wonderful time of rejoicing. That must have been 3,000 people got saved in that one day. What a revival that was. Praise the Lord for that. But you and I have to realize that we are sinners when we're born into this world. We need forgiveness for those sins. The only way of forgiveness is through the precious blood of Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ shed his precious blood upon the cross. Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. And he was buried. And he rose again the third day according to the scriptures, in whom we have redemption, through his blood even, the forgiveness of sins. You want to have you experienced the forgiveness for your sins through putting your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Then they that gladly received his word were baptized as believers' baptism, not to gain salvation, but because of salvation, my friend. And the same day, there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, and in breaking of bread and in prayers. And fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. And all that believed were together and had all things common. And, uh, and so their possessions and goods and part of them to all men as every man had need. And they continuing uh, daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart, praising God and having favour with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. As I said, this was a wonderful time of revival in the history of the church, the early church. That is when, at the beginning of things here, when the Holy Spirit was given. So you and I need to understand, we need to be born again. We need to be born again into God's family through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Without that new birth, my friend, we're heading down to hell. And God does not want you to go down to hell. He's not willing that any should perish, but that hell should come to repentance. Repentance being a change of mind. Simply agree with God that you are a sinner. It's a change of mind. And then believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. See, the heaven or hell, my friend, what will it be for you? Your eternal destiny is determined by what you do with the Lord Jesus Christ. Will he be your saviour? Or will he have to be your judge? It's either one or the other. You cannot sit on the fence after you've heard the message of Jesus Christ, the good news, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. After you've heard that message, you must either reject or receive Christ as your saviour. And as I said, your eternal destiny hinges on what you do with Jesus Christ, in whom we have redemption, through his blood even, the forgiveness of sin. If you're interested in this, look me up, youtube.com forward slash peace by Jesus Christ. God bless you, and thanks for listening.